Hello, church family. Can I? We good? Okay. Praise God. Good to see everyone. We've got a lot of families here today. Amen. I brought my family here today. Do you know? I got my grandson here today. <laughs> yeah. I'm very excited about that. Uh, Cindy and I are very excited to be able to kick off 2021. Uh, the year. Yeah. Go ahead. No, the year. Works. The year of the family. Uh, here at Springtown, families are very, very important to us. And uh, because we are a big family. Uh, every age group, from mama, daddies, uh, children, of course, grandparents, single parents, single people, everybody is part of the family Amen. here at Springtown. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We're very excited. I don't know if this is on or not, but okay. It is now. We are very excited um, because the family is not, when you think of family, if I asked you all what family means to you, well, you could only, you'd probably give me a lot of different answers, but... You know, the family has evolved. We have blended families. We have, um, you know, we're not, we're not just this little nuclear unit that we used to be. We have adopted families. We've, we've uh, brought family, in other words, they're not necessarily biological family, but they're family to us. Does that make sense? And so it looks very different for a lot of people. And, and we know personally that um, we, we haven't um, always done things correctly. <laughs> Matter of fact, very incorrectly. There's a right um, way and a wrong way. There's an easy way and a hard way. Yeah. But we hope that through this series that something will click for your family. Not all things are going to fit for you, but you might know someone that you could share it with. So yeah. I hope you enjoy the series, and I hope that you will participate. This is not... This is about all of you. Yeah. So we're looking forward to... Uh, as they say, you try to ask for volunteers and no one raises their hand, so you get voluntold. You get, yes, well, you can do this for me. So anyway, yeah. I hope you have fun. It's going to be an exciting time. Yeah. You know, I, I've, been, I've had the privilege and the honor of pastoring for 15 years now. 15 years. And um, uh, I've seen changes in people's lives. I have. But I know that the, because of the time that we're living in, that, that God is wanting more. He's wanting to see transformed lives, change lives, people that, that, that actually will be changed. And so we're, this year in 2021, the year of the family, it's also going to be the year of application. In other words, we're going to take everything that we're learning and we're going to say, how can we apply this to our life? How can we make this something that I can wear in my family? How can, can I use this to, to grow my family spiritually, or, uh, my children, my, my grandchildren, uh, each other, his husband and wives? How can we grow together? So I want to start out with a scripture in Psalms 127, verse 1. Uh, I want to, everybody should thank their sound team. We've got an incredible sound team. Uh, we've had some uh, things go wrong. The internet went down. Pray for that kind of stuff because we're going to be dependent on that here today. And they got up there and hustled together and some, getting some stuff together. But Psalms 127 verse 1 uh, makes a very profound statement that we're going to kick off today's message in. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, they who labor will labor in vain. That is why, that is why that, that our houses, it, and I, when I say our houses, I'm talking about your homes, have just got to be houses of prayer. Amen. Now, as a parent, you know, none of us, and Cindy mentioned this, none of us can be perfect parents. But we can all be praying parents, right? We can all be praying parents. In other words, we don't have it all together. We don't, none of us do. None of us. You look a lot of times we come to church, we look around and say, Oh, that family's got it together. No, they don't. <laughs> they got their they got their happy happy Sabbath face on. I mean they they might have been beating their children on the way here, you know. Uh, none of us have it none of us have it all together. None of us do. We're just trying to make it right. So don't try to be a perfect parent, but try to be a praying parent. In other words, bring God in on the equation. I, I think that the, the most terrible thing that could ever be, could be is that, is that uh, for unanswered prayers for our family. And because we don't ask them. It's the prayers that we don't it's ask. It's the prayers we don't ask. James 4, 2 says we have not because we ask not. We have not because we ask not. 
There, there's things that God wants to do in your family. There's things, I, I'm a perfect example. God wanted to do something in our family. He wanted to use me in the ministry. He wanted me to be the spiritual leader in my home. But he had to have someone to stand in the gap and pray for me for that to happen. Because I was a long ways from that. So, see, you see, some things won't happen unless you pray. So, pray, pray, prayer changes things. It does. So, well, go ahead. I, was just, I was just thinking back to um, way, way back um, before we actually became Seventh-day Adventist. And as you all know, Dave, that was very instrumental in leading us to the Lord, his wife, Lisa, she handed me a little book one time. I didn't, I look back, it's just so crazy. But it was a little, you may have it. It's a little green devotional. It's called Friends. And it's green on the front. It's really small. It's not one of the larger size devotionals. And she said, you know, I don't know if this will work for your family or not. She says, but if you could just find a few minutes at the end of your day or the beginning of your day and just share some of these thoughts in there with your family. And I went, what? I mean, that just seems so weird to me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and she, it was her book and I still have it with her name on. It's very special to us. And, and so we sat down and we started every night, you know, we had different age children. So we had to do age appropriate things and in time appropriate, you know, we didn't sit down and do an hour Bible study with our children. We wouldn't have even known how, but, um, what mm -hmm. we did is we shared the word of God with them. And, you know, there's a verse in uh, Luke 11. I shared this with the Academy last night. Uh, Luke 11, 28. And it says, Jesus said, you, uh, it says, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Blessed are they. Who wants to be blessed? Who is ready for some huge blessings? I know I am. We okay, just a few of you are. That's okay. Um, I, I want to be blessed and I wanted my family to have a blessing because our family was just so messed up and so really <laughs> and I'm like wow could this little could this little book do anything could these words do anything well the Bible says blessed are they that keep it and so you know we started um, spending time with our family just short periods of time reading these things and before we knew it the kids begin doing skits they would act out, you know, whether it be Daniel in the lion's den, and, and we'd tell them, you can do anything you want, but it has to be something from the Bible. And they would go in their room, and, oh, they did some elaborate things. And it became the fabric of our life. And, oh, several months had passed, and we'd got home late one night. And so there was no family devotion that night. we shoot everyone to bed, and, and, and Reese come in our room, and he's like, we forgot something. And I went, what did we forget? We didn't have our family devotion tonight. It was the first night that we had missed, and we went, wow, something is, something's changing there. So it does make a difference, and you may not see it right away, but blessed is the family yep. that will spend time in the Word of God. So what we're going to do uh, today is we're, we're going to look at a fundamental building block of our, of our vertical relationship with God, which is very important, right? Before a family, before a family can be blessed, We've got to bring God into the equation. We've got to bring Him into the life, into our life somehow. Prayer is a very key ingredient in that. Uh, I'm going to ask the guys to put up Luke chapter 11, verse 1. Luke chapter 11, verse 1 is, is a scripture. Jesus' disciples had walked up to Him one day uh, and found Him in a place that, that, that was probably pretty common to find Him at. They knew what He was doing there. And, and out of all the things... Out of all the things that they could have come up and asked Jesus to do, uh, out of everything, they, they, they could have said, Lord, teach us to make disciples. Teach us, and I, I would have I asked, I probably would have asked, teach me to walk on water. I would like to do, I'm going to do that. <laughs> but uh, teach, me, teach me to do miracles, right? Teach me, teach me. But what did they ask? What did they realize that, was, that Jesus had, that, that, that there was something about Jesus so bad they desperately wanted him to teach them how to do? Pray, pray. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. We're going to look at that today. Teach us how to pray. I'm going to show a video clip here. We're going to learn Jesus teach us how to pray. What difference does prayer make in our life? We're, we're, how does prayer make an impact on our lives? We got a video of a young man here that we're going to look uh, that this was, this was on a, a, a news channel. Please just listen to this.
prayer at a time. On Monday, Trey Elliott asked an officer at a cookout if he could pray for him. Trey's mother took a picture of that moment that has now been shared more than 11,000 times. That small act has turned into a big dream. Two Works For You's Christy Maria sat down with Trey to talk about his new goal and to deliver a special surprise. It seems like there's some really, really tough, tough times. I just think it will help them. That's what seven-year-old Trey Elliott told his mom, Brittany, on Monday before approaching a group of Tulsa police officers to pray for them. To see faith, you know, faith through a child's eyes is pretty awesome because I wish everybody had that same faith. Later that day, he did it again, this time with an officer at a cookout. Brittany took this picture to always remember the moment. Little did she know it would inspire thousands and create a new dream for her son. Trey's made himself a goal. He wants to pray for every officer in Tulsa now. Yeah. Um, I think that's like over 800. So far, he's at 12. So we brought in some backup to help him out. Trey, look. How did you do that? Four more, happy to add to his count. Okay. How are you? Feel good? There's not an officer in Tulsa that wouldn't pray with him. Trey's prayer for his new friends, both simple and powerful. God, please protect these police officers and their family and their town, their city. Amen. 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 Thank you so Thank much. You. They know that there's hope, that it's not, not everybody is out there to get them and, you know, something's going to happen. You made me cry happy tears, little man. A little human is holding my hand and praying for officers and just, I mean, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I mean, it just, it, it makes your heart flutter. I mean, it just, it's, it's heartwarming. Trey says any more officers who want to come say a prayer are welcome to his block anytime. Makes me super proud of this guy because he has a great heart. In Tulsa, Chris DeMaria, Two Works for You. Hey, does, do our police officers need prayers? Yeah. Yes, they do. Okay, young people, it's okay to pray for our police officers. Now, we've got another, we've got another video uh, that we want to show some more more local. You might, let's just see if anybody recognizes uh, this little lady here on um, the next video that they're going to play. All right, Emily. Uh oh. <laughs> can you guess who it is? <laughs> Go ahead and play it if that's all you can get. So, one Friday night, not that long ago, we were over at Grammy and Poppy's house and a message came Volume in. Up that something was lost. Do you remember what was lost? Pastor Wicks. What? Dogs. 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 His dogs and his kids' dogs too, I think. Yep. Yep. Okay. And we were really worried about them. So that night we knew we knew that they were spotted somewhere near Tufco, which is we drove right past that on our way home. So while we were driving, we um we did what? Um, looked around. Looked around. Yeah, we looked. Oh, we actually saw one dog at Grammy's, but it wasn't his. That's right, we did. We saw one dog. We got really excited, but it wasn't. And we were looking for how many dogs? Do you remember? Three. Me. Yep. We only saw one. And we looked and we looked while we were driving, and we could not find them. And so then what'd you do? Um, say a player. You said a prayer. Because we do that when things are lost, right? Yeah. And then, do you remember what happened? We said that prayer. And then they got found. They got found. Cousin Robert and Kate actually found them in their, like, in their backyard. Wasn't that great? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now, how does, here's, here, let's think about this. How does, does uh, young Emmeline know that when there's an impossible situation that comes up in their life, to pray? It has to be, it has to be modeled at the home. It starts at the home, right? It starts at the home. Okay, I'm, I'm going I'm to ask mom to come up, Jamie, and, and perhaps grandmother if she would like to. But, but let me tell you a story here. Let me tell you the, the rest of this story here while they're getting ready, getting their courage up to come on up. Uh, here, uh, well, a few weeks ago, something like that. Uh, January 1. January 1, so it was a little bit longer than that. Okay, 
uh, we were babysitting my son's dogs. And, and they, we went to feed them, uh, and they weren't there. They weren't there. This was, uh, this, was, this, was, uh, Friday, this was Friday evening. Sabbath was drawing near. Uh, the, the dog, they, they was not there. And they apparently had been gone maybe for a little while. We didn't know it. And so we panicked because, I mean, how in the world are they going to ever let me babysit their son if I can't keep up with their dogs? I mean, that's what's going through my mind. I mean, Nash, you know, how, they're not going to let me keep Nash if I keep, if their dogs get lost and die and everything like that. So what do we do? We pray about it. And so we sent the SOS out to a lot of church members, uh, Bert and Brian found out about it. They were in prayer about it. They shared it with Jamie and, and, uh, and their family. And that's where Emmeline knew, well, I know what to do. We're going to pray. And she come into church, Sabbath. She come to church. Emmeline did. She said, oh, Pastor, you've lost your puppy. They had been praying for my puppy. And I went, oh, it's so wonderful. Well, that evening, that evening, what happened is, uh, well, Friday, Bert and Brian were carrying Robert, uh, picking up Robert and Caitlin from their honeymoon and uh, from the airport, and they share with them about the dog. Now, what's the coincidence? Now, you, now this, let's bring God in on this equation here. This is how faithful God is to answer your prayers, young people. Young people, God hears your prayers. He hears your prayers. Emmeline and, and Harper lifted up prayers for our puppy dog, and God could have chose anybody to find my puppy dog, but it had to be part of their family. It had to be Robert and Caitlin. God just did that. This all started, this miracle all started because the family uh, modeled and taught prayer. And I'd like, Jamie, if you just get up and share whatever God's laid on your heart about how, how why it's so important to you, uh, uh, you know, you're a parent, and for some reason or other, Telling your children about Jesus and that He hears our prayers is important to you and Andrew. Which by Andrew uh, would be here now in Emmeline, uh, but they are there in Harper, but they're quarantined right now because of their school with COVID. That's the reason the whole family's not here. But in share what's important to you. Well, I don't know. I mean, I thought about it when he asked me to get up and talk, and um, you know, we've we've started working with our girls on praying and we've been doing nightly devotions and then every night we have a prayer um, it's kind of funny Emmeline has a checklist I'm pretty sure and if we don't get everything in the prayer we have to do it over um, it's praying to keep the bad guys away and that she sleeps and has good dreams we have to say good dreams or no dreams at all mm -hmm. she'd rather no dreams if she can't have a good one um, we've added forgiving her sins is new to the list and so you know we've gotten to where that's kind of just become a regular part, praying before meals and stuff. Um, but, you know, I've thought a lot about the, the modeling, and, you know, I guess maybe we've done more than we realized for her to think about it in these situations. It's not the first lost item that we've had her pray for. Um, but one thing has kind of struck me as I've thought about it is, while I think we've modeled it enough for her to internalize it, I think that she is teaching us a lot about uh, the faith to pray for things because there have been a few things that she said, oh, whether it was something that she lost or something that she wanted, and she said, okay, we'll, we'll pray for it. And like the mom part of me goes, ooh, maybe not that one. Because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that one's going to, you know. And then I kind of I kind of realized, ooh, that's you know, that's my lack of faith. And yet she believes that no matter what it is, she'll pray for it. And I'm over here trying to censor which things we pray for because I'm afraid that maybe she won't get the answer that she wants. Yeah. Um, so I think if anything, she's teaching us how to pray for Praise anything. God. Yeah, the faith of a child. Mm -hmm. Faith, Jamie, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, prayer, prayer does make a difference. Um, you know, growing, as I look back on our family, and I'm going to ask Cindy to come up now, Grandma to come up. Uh, it's got a ring to it, doesn't it? Uh, she, Cindy was the, she was the spiritual leader in our home uh, in the beginning of our marriage. Uh, I, I was too busy, to so caught, too caught up basically in the world. She is the one that, that, uh, that taught the kids how to pray. She's, she's the ones that did the, the family devotions in the home. Uh, she's the one that, that uh, 
took time to do it. I wouldn't have done it. I would just, I mean, I would just sit over there in the recliner and did my thing. But she took the time to, to make sure and structure in our family life the, the importance of having prayer time in our family. And, uh, and you know, but, but I, I say all that in setting the stage up for our next video clip that we're going to have is, is, that, um, is that, yes, uh, it's important, m young moms and dads. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna cater to you a lot because it's so important. I believe that everything really starts at an early age. But all through walks of life, prayer is important. You know, uh, anybody here got any praying grandparents? One, huh? One person? Just one person? I'm going to tell you what. Two. I, I think we all probably could say, or a lot of us could say, that we had grandparents that prayed for us. I want you to know, grandparents, those of us here that are grandparents, our prayers make a difference. Yeah. Our prayers make a huge difference. I want, to, I want you to put this, let's put this in context. I want you to think of is God uh, constrained by time? Think about it. Does God die? Does God remember all things? Your prayers will matter for uh, forever. You know, God, your prayers don't. They don't. They don't lose. They don't go. They don't go uh, uh, obsolete. They don't. They they don't expire. Your prayers don't expire. Your prayers matter. Pray for your grandchildren. Pray for them. Uh, and there's 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 something about. Did anybody watch the movie War Room? If you hadn't, that's a good one. It's a good one on prayer. It really is. Cindy, why don't you share your thoughts on this next video? Yeah, I just want to say before the video um, plays that uh, I was thinking about. Sorry, I'm had a little accident at church this morning, <laughs> and I'm falling apart. Um, my grandfather. If any of you have read the book, you'll know that my grandfather is a very it was a very integral part of my life. He would sit on the porch swing and sing songs and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. And he had a deep voice. And I loved him so very much. And my mom was a, a godly person and took me to church. And I uh, loved my dad greatly, but there was not any spiritual nourishment from my, from my dad. So my grandfather was that man. And so you grandfathers are have a huge role to play. because Grandmothers it made a, too. Yes, but um, definitely made a... A change in my life. Um, we've got some friends uh, in Northwest Arkansas, and they've been here before. And some of you may know them and recognize uh, the guy in the video. They're not church members, but uh, I've been very inspired by this individual because the very first time we were invited to their home, he showed me something, and I went, "Oh, that is amazing." You may have one too, but go ahead and play the video, and then I'll share some more after the video. Hey, Larry, how are you doing today? All right, Cindy. Good. So, just got a question for you today. Okay. I'm doing a little project on prayer, and I'm just wondering, is prayer an important part of your life? Oh, absolutely. Wonderful. Uh, what part do you feel that prayer should play in the life of a family, especially in 2021? It should be everything. Everything that you do, it, it uh, should be based on prayer. Uh, you need to ask and beg and plead and whatever you need to do, but uh, prayer is very essential to your family. Have you personally seen God work miracles in your life oh, yeah. through prayer? Yes, absolutely. So what are some of your daily practices? How do you incorporate prayer into your life, into Larry's life every day? What does prayer look like for you? Well, every day, I, I have a routine every day. Some days I have to pray to be able to get out of bed, but once I do, I'm up, dressed, teeth brushed, coffee going, but I go straight to prayer every morning. Awesome. Uh, seven days a week. Uh, that is my routine. Uh, it's not something I've always done, uh, but God has carried me along for years. Uh, to get to this point of having a set time that I do it every day. Uh, so I'm just curious, Larry, do you have a special place that you like to pray every day? I do. Uh, it's a, a place that uh, originally was going to be a play closet for my grandson, but uh, 
my uh, wonderful wife said, you know, maybe you should make it a prayer closet. Oh, uh, Would we? Sun's out. God's in. Amen. So it's uh, it's uh, worked out beautifully, and I just love it. It's, it's it's my place to go. Would you mind if? We saw your prayer closet. Would you be willing to show us that? Not at all. All right, let's go. Okay, it's right here. All right. This is oh, it. Wow. Oh, and there's your chair. Go ahead and have chair. a seat, Larry. Okay. This this is where I where I go. Uh, so, uh, what do we have here on the wall? I see a lot. Well, of it's a, a lot of family uh, everywhere uh, from all ages up till now and. Some are gone and some are still here, but uh, just it helps helps get me uh, in the right place. Praise uh, God, Larry. Prayer uh, God. Yeah. That's uh, I spend as much time as as I feel I need to. Uh, and it it varies from day to day, but most days at least an hour. Uh, I have a pretty well a, a set time that, that I, I come in and different uh, studies I do and, and praying the whole time. So this, this, is, this is my war room, uh, so to speak. Well, Larry, thank you for giving us a sneak peek into your prayer life you and your prayer room. We really appreciate it. You bet. God bless you. Thank you. I really was touched when Larry said, I stay there as long as I need to, which I know that he does spend about an hour a day in that room, if you couldn't hear from that video. I'm just curious, any of you have a specific prayer room like that in your home that you'd be willing to say, I've got a designated prayer room? I mean, I would love to have that. It's, it's a very special place. And Larry is very, very intentional about prayer. And I believe that he may not see things in this life, but one day he's going to see the fruit of those prayers that he has prayed over and over and over. And, you know, I can tell you that um, I really wasn't going to share this, but we don't have a prayer room, but we had this very special little piece of furniture in our home <laughs> that has just got gifted to Brooks and Miranda and Nash. After almost 20 years, we had this ottoman that Anytime we left our home, anytime that we left to go on a trip, big thing, a big issue of prayer, it's on the knees around the ottoman and we prayed. So Miranda, you've got baked in over 20 something years of prayers in that ottoman. And so um, we didn't want to get rid of it. So we were able to give it to them recently. And so now we have a new little nook on our <laughs> couch that we pray around. But I think it's important to have a special place. Now we don't have, we can pray anytime, anywhere, but it's important as a family. I think your kids will remember that. I know our kids do. We've spent a lot of time around that, that little spot. So I just want to encourage you to find that, that special place. And you know what, if you're not, pray, if you're not a praying family, it's okay, God will, the Holy Spirit will teach you, and you can ask the Holy Spirit to teach you, and he will help you, and you might do a minute a day, you might grow, I don't know what God's going to do with you, but I know it's going to be very special, so God bless you, and looking forward to the year of the family. Amen. That's, uh, you know, Jesus' disciples come up to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. And that's, that's our heart cry uh, to Springtown. Teach us all to pray. Are we there yet? No, but we want to be there. And I think probably the, the, the best place to start if we want to learn how to pray is look at the life of Jesus, right? Look at the life of Jesus. I'm going to ask to put up on the screen Mark 135. Let's, let's take a look at a couple of scriptures here at the prayer life of Jesus and see if there's anything that sticks out. Now, in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there he prayed. So, two things jump out at this scripture right here, okay? What were they? He had a time, and he had a place to pray, just like Cindy was sharing there. All right, let's look at uh, Luke 5, 15 through 16. Luke chapter 
5, verse 15, 16. And, and so I know, I know what your parents are thinking because I'm there too. Believe it or not, we're busy. How do we have time for that? You know, we got, we got homework. We've got this to do. We've got that to do. We're rushing in. We've got to cook supper. We've got we to gotta get baths. Was Jesus busy? What, do, do you think that anybody here could be busier than Jesus? Uh, in Luke chapter 5, and can, you, can we get verse 15 too? Just to pick up the context here. Luke 5, 15 and 16. I want to, yeah, listen to this right here. However, the report went around concerning him all the more. The word got out. Jesus is coming to town. What happened when Jesus, when that happened, the word got out? Everybody flogged him. Everybody wanted a piece of Jesus, right? Everybody wanted to be around Jesus. Great multitudes came together to hear him and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And, and, then, it, and then it, so, it got so busy, so crazy, that what did he have to do? So he himself, verse 16, so he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Friends, this has got to be top priority for our families here. All ages, whether, whether you're a grandparent or whether you're a, parent, a single parent or whether you're a married parent with children, it's got to be top priority in our life. We have got to set aside time every single day. Somehow, some way, we've got to make the time. You know, we've, we often said we make the time to do the things we really want to do. Friends, we have not got time as families. In 2021, everything going on, we have not got time not to spend time with Jesus. So everybody desperately needs to set a time, a place, and a, and a, and a time to spend time with Jesus. A place, a place, and see, as you go forward, and you have these little answers to prayers like Jamie and Andrew are having uh, with Emmeline and Harper, as you go forward, what will happen? God's going to bless like Cindy said earlier, he's going to bless your time with him in prayer. When you're, when, you're, when you're showing your children Jesus, when you're teaching them to pray to Jesus and he hears our prayers, I promise you he will bless. And, you're going to, and so, so he's going to answer prayers. So I think the most wonderful thing we can do for our family is go back to the place where we know that God hears our prayers. So it's so important to have a place that you know that God has answered your prayers in the past. Right? So do you think David, David uh, wanted to go back to where uh, Goliath, where he defeated Goliath at? Was he, did he want to go back on that field when God showed up big? Probably so. What, what about, what about um, Abraham? Do you think he ever wanted to go back on the mountain, uh, Mount Moriah? You know, where God came through, Jehovah Jireh? You know, he was about to take his son's life and God came through. You think he went, he went back up on that mountain and prayed? You bet he did. Why do you think Daniel, uh, we studied Daniel not very long ago. Why do you think Daniel, uh, three times a day, even though he knew that he was going to get through in the lion's den, he knew that's a place where he met God at and that was more important to him than anything else. Friends, having a place that we know God showed up. What it does when you go back there as a family and you get, you get around that spot that you, that you have your family worship and your prayer time, you know that's a place where God shows up and it increases your faith on what God is going to do in the future. So we say, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Now, here's another thing. And, and, uh, and maybe you could even take notes here. Maybe this is because this is application. I'm encouraging you, point number one and two, find a time and a place to pray. Time and a place to pray. Write that down in your heart. A time and a place to pray. Everybody, all ages. A third thing to do, this Bible right here, this Bible right here is not only meant to be read, but it's meant to be prayed by. Did you know that? This is where the most powerful prayers are at right here, right in the Word of God. While you're reading the Word of God, circle the promises and claim those. Teach your children. Teach your children to pray the promises of God back to Him in prayer. It's the most powerful prayers there is. Praying back the Word of God. I love going through Psalms. A lot of the Bible speaks to me. Uh, the Psalms speak for me. I love reading the Psalms. Psalms speaks. You can go through that. So teach your children how to get precious promises that they can claim and they can pray back to God. That's, I think, one of the most important things you could do. Uh, another uh, 
And so that's number three. Number four, yesterday I was on, a, I'm a part of a, a group that, of people that pray throughout the North American Division. Barry Black was on, our, was on the line yesterday and part of our team. Does everybody know who Barry Black is? Barry Black is a godly man. He's a chaplain to the Senate. He's like our Daniel in, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, you know, in the government right now. He's our Daniel is what he is. And he's a man of God and he loves the Lord. Uh, uh, he was sharing with us with something very, very important. And I think it's very timely that we're, that we're learning how to pray here at Springtown in our families. Cindy mentioned this. Let's just say you're, you're just starting here. You don't know how to pray. You've never really gathered your family around a place and started doing any of that. You don't know how to do it. I want you to share a scripture that's found in, in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. I used, I used uh, the Amplified Version on this because I like I liked the way that, that it fits here. Uh, but uh, King James is fine here. Uh, if you don't know, let's just say you're just beginning here to learn how to pray. Ask the Holy Spirit. Nobody cares about you more than God. He wants you to make it. He wants your family to make it. Ask God. Ask Him through the Holy Spirit. Help me pray. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the Romans 8.26 Amplified Version, it says, In the same way the Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weakness. We do not know what to pray. We, we, do, we do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it. As we should, but the Spirit Himself knows our need and at the right time intercedes on our behalf, helps us pray. So ask the Holy Spirit. Parents, parents, uh, grandparents, ask the Holy Spirit. Maybe, you're having, uh, maybe you've got a teenager. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> teenager. Ask God to, to, Holy Spirit, help me pray for my teenager so I can connect with them. I don't know how to connect with them. Maybe you've got a, a young adult family that has no interest in God whatsoever as a grandparent. It, ask God to help you pray for them. We don't, know how, we don't know how to pray or what to pray. Ask God. Bring Him into the equation. Does this make sense? These are all things that you can take that will help you as a family as we go forward. Now, so, um, now when, we, when we pray... When we pray, it's like the difference between our best and God's best. It's bringing God into the equation is what it's doing. This is all we're doing here now, church family. In families, we're, we're bringing God in right where we're at. We're not there yet. We're not perfect yet. But we're just bringing God in and asking for His help. And He wants to help and He wants to be part of this. I know where Cindy and I were at before we started praying. It was terrible in our home we fought all the time it was it was a train wreck but when we started praying cindy dreaded coming home she she said she used to start having these i don't know anxiety attacks before she would come home but when we started praying she this is part of her testimony here when we started praying it's like it went away instantly when we started praying together i mean even when you're when, when, when you get in a fight or something at home does that ever happen to anybody else? Have a little disagreement there? Yeah, yeah, it does, right? The best thing you can do, be the first one to say, let's pray about it. Be the first one. Now, it's not easy, but be the first one to say, let's pray about this. When, when you do that, when you pray about it, it brings God into the equation, and He starts working on whatever it is that's wrong. And it's always usually pride or something like that or selfishness. But, but God will start working on it and He'll make it all better. I promise He will. It's always better to do that. When we started praying together, it's like we gave God... When we started praying as a family together, it's like it gave God permission to be the Lord of our family. And Satan had to get out. And let me tell you what, we are a new story when we started praying together in our family. And it works the same way in your life. Friends, we've just got to learn how to fight right. We're at war. Families, we've got to learn how to fight right. Don't try to do this no more by yourself. Satan's going to beat you up. Oh, I'm, I'm an unworthy parent. You know, we ain't got time and all this stuff. Start where you are. Just start praying. Start right where you are and start praying. Start right there. Dare to believe that God believes he can, he, can, he can bless your family. Start right there, and He will bless you. We leave so much on the table when we don't pray to God 
and ask him to be part of our life. So I thought we'd close today with a song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. I think we, what a friend. We've got a God that wants to help us with whatever is going on in our life. And uh, I thought we are going to get the team up. I'm so thankful. Yep, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, please, yep. Yeah. Thank you so much. Praise team, worship. You know, I'd, I'd like to, to thank our, our thank our praise and worship team. I threw that on them at the very last second. Thank you very much for not throwing something at me. Uh, but I really appreciate it. I think that said the whole message. That was the whole message right there. What a friend we have in Jesus. Why, why do we try to carry all these burdens ourselves? It's hard. We were never designed to do it. We were never designed to carry these burdens by ourselves. We need Jesus in our life. And He loves And He wants to help us. He wants to help us parents, young parents, grandparents, all ages. He wants to help you because He cares about what's going on in your life. So this was, this was building block number one. Next, next week, we're, we're going to be, we're going to be, next time I come together here, uh, we're going to be looking at another, another very important building block uh, with God, and, it, and, it, and it's going to be more of, of like the Word, getting in the Bible, our devotional time, and what difference that makes. So be in prayer about this, and get the Word out. This is, we're just trying to make it here, friends. We're just trying to make it all the way to heaven. And we want our church family, we want everybody, all ages, from the little children all the way to grandma and grandpa, we want to all make it, right? And so let's be in prayer as we, as we, go, as we go forward, we're all for families in 2021. Join me in prayer, please. Father in heaven, we thank you, dear God, that for the love that you have shown toward your family. It's, part of the, it's wonderful to be a part of the family of God. And Lord, we just pray, we ask you, dear God, uh, through your Holy Spirit, that you would even teach us. Teach us how to grow closer to you and build stronger families, stronger grandmas and grandpas, and stronger mom and dad, stronger uh, boys and girls and uh, young adults. We just want to go stronger in our relationship with you as we prepare for your soon return. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.